Welcome to the Crypto Sphere. This is Cryptogenic coming at you. Today is Thursday, February 15th at 8.18 a.m. here in rainy California. Today I want to talk about what technical analysis can and cannot do for you. Now, last year I did a review of Howard Marks's book, Mastering the Market Cycle. There's a link to that video in the description of this video. I'd recommend you'd watch that review. If you want to understand how market cycles work, Howard Marks is a master, and he explains it beautifully. One of the explanations or the illustrations that he gave helps us understand the benefits and limits of technical analysis. And this is what he said. He said, if there were there was a barrel full of go, uh, full of uh, ping pong balls. And you knew that some of the ping pong balls were white and some of the ping pong balls were black. If you had no knowledge of percentages, then you would just be taking random guesses. If I pulled one out and said, is it black or white? You'd just be making random guesses. But if you knew that 68% of those ping pong balls were black, what would your strategy be? And the answer to that question is, you would just always say black. Just every time I pull a ping pong ball out, what color is this ping pong ball? It's black. Knowing that 32% of the time you're going to be wrong. The, the concept is 68% of the time you're guaranteed to be right. Now, nothing can give you a guaranteed 68% strike rate. And so you'll take those odds any day. Just always call black. Now, what happens is your emotions get the best of you because if there's 100 ping pong balls in there and you call black every time, it's possible that the first 32 of them are white. That's possible. And so you think, you know, well, 68% of them are black. Shouldn't they be black 68% of the time? Well, yes, but that's only if you stay until I pull out every single golf ball or every single ping pong ball in this barrel. The first 32 of them possibly could be white. In other words, all the white ones could be on the top. You don't know how they're mixed. You just know that 68% of them are black. Now, I want us to think about this metaphor for a second because if you knew that 68%, let's say there were 1,000 ping pong balls in this bucket, if the first hundred of them are white and you're wrong the first hundred times, your strategy logically should not change. You should actually become more excited because every time you call a wrong one, you're eliminating another, another white one from the bucket. So if the first 32 of them or 320 of them are white, you should get more and more excited because you're coming up on a streak in which now you know every single one of them is going to be black. What tends to happen is we give up because the first 20 or 30 of them were white and we were wrong. Now, how is this related to technical analysis? Let me explain. When we're looking at charts and technical analysis, for instance, let's use this Bitcoin chart uh, to demonstrate what we're talking about. So when we're looking at charts here in technical analysis, I'll start with this four-hour chart. What is Bitcoin doing? Well, Bitcoin first is in this trend. And what we can see is we had this line of resistance and we broke above this line of resistance. But what kind of trend is this? This trend is an ascending, broadening wedge. Notice it's closer together here and it's just getting broader and broader and broader. What happens in an ascending broadening wedge? Well, around 60 to 63, 64% of the time, 
they break down bearish. So typically, they do something like this. And then they break down. But this one broke above the trend. Now, a lot of times I'll post a video and I'll, I'll see Bitcoin up here at the top of an ascending, broadening wedge. And I'll say, yeah, I, I, I expect it to break down, come down and test the bottom. If it breaks out, it'll test the top again or give us a lower high. And that kind of confirms for us that we're going to break down, test the bottom, and then break through and then come to these lower levels. I'll call that every time. Why? Because that's how ascending, broadening wedges tend to function. But you say, you were wrong. It broke above. Yes, I'm going to be wrong about 32 to 38% of the time. But I'm going to be right about that is if I just keep calling them, at a certain point, I'm going to be right. Now, another thing we're seeing on this chart is we're making lower highs here in the RSI. The price is making higher highs here. Lower highs in the RSI, higher highs in the price. That's called bearish divergence. Now, when I see bearish divergence, I typically call a breakdown is coming. Why? Bearish divergence is a reversal pattern. It indicates that the wine, the energy is leaving the wine, and the asset is topping out. Now, this is a four-hour chart, so bearish divergence would simply indicate a short-term pullback. So looking at this chart, what I expect is a pullback, at least to, to test this order block or to test this line before determining are we going to break out or are we going to break down. So now that I'm seeing bearish divergence, that's what I'll call. I'll say, you know what, I expect this to break down. Now what happens if all of a sudden it breaks out? You know what, that's possible. It's going to do that. 30% of the time. You know what I, you understand what I'm saying? But the thing with technical analysis is that there's a typical behavior. And when you identify the typical behavior, all you're identifying is probabilities within the chart. The problem is probabilities are not guarantees and so sometimes an asset will behave in a way that defies the probabilities it does something different for instance down here we were in an ascending broadening wedge well not really ascending it was just a broadening wedge it was flat on the bottom but broadening on top still a bearish pattern it's supposed to break down from there what did we do we broke out and then we took off. And now we're making another ascending broadening wedge. So what do I think is going to happen? I think we're going to top out at some point. We're going to come down and test the bottom of the wedge. And then we're going to break bearish. Why? Because that's what ascending broadening wedges do. Now, is that guaranteed? Absolutely not. It could, it could break bullish above the, the top of here. What I'm saying is that there's a 60 plus percent chance that we top out here and we come down and we test the bottom of this wedge and we either break down or we take another swipe at the top before we come down and test the bottom of this wedge and break down. Those are the probabilities and that is the benefit of technical analysis. Now, look at what's happening here on the weekly chart. We've simply got an ascending channel. What do ascending channels typically do? They typically break bearish. So, and typically, according to Elliott Wave Theory, they will break out, they'll go in a, a waves of five. So, what we could see is a fifth wave here. Because basically what we've seen from here is one, two, three, we could see four, five. 
and then a breakdown, which would be like an um, maybe like an A B C correction, something like that, possible. So I don't know exactly how that's going to work, but I think it's very probable that we get at least a breakdown to test the bottom of this channel before determining are we breaking out again or are we breaking down, right? So that's what technical analysis does for us. Technical analysis provides us with probabilities. It provides indicators that offer probabilities. Now, going back to this weekly chart, there's something else that's of interest here. And that's that we're seeing bearish divergence on the weekly chart. Notice this high here. And then we've got a lower high here. Now, of course, this hasn't turned over yet, so we don't know if that's the high. It can invalidate that thesis by breaking above and making a higher high before it stops. However, so far, we've already got a higher high in the price and a lower high in the RSI. That is called bearish divergence. Now, we're seeing bearish divergence on the weekly chart. Now, this is more of a macro chart. Bearish divergence on the weekly chart does not mean that there's an impending breakdown. Bearish divergence on the weekly chart could take weeks to months to play out, whereas bearish divergence on the four-hour chart could take hours to days to play out. Bearish divergence on the daily chart could take days to weeks to play out. So the fact that I'm seeing this on the weekly chart doesn't mean that the breakdown is imminent. I mean, it could happen because we're hitting the top of you know, I mean, we could at least get a pull back to here as the RSI pulls back to the bottom of this line. But then it could easily break out again for the next several weeks, even to months, and, and make higher highs. So um, anything is always possible. And technical analysis does not guarantee anything. It's not a crystal ball. However, the opportunity to be able to look at a chart and say, here are the probabilities, and the probabilities here are in the 60 percentile. That is um, a compelling method for decreasing anxiety in the market. Because number one, I'm not anxious about the possibility that I'm wrong. There's always a possibility that I'm wrong. However, if I stay consistent in the market and I, I understand how these trends historically work, then eventually I'm going to be right. And I'm actually going to be right in the long term more consistently than I'm wrong. And if I'm right in the long term more consistently than I'm wrong, then I make a profit. That's all to it. So... That's what technical analysis does, and uh, I tried to illustrate how that works on the Bitcoin chart. Hope it helped. Uh, if you got anything valuable out of this video, give me a like, subscribe to this channel. And remember, above all, number one, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Make it your aim to sleep in peace, wake in joy, walk in love. And with that being said, this is Cryptogenic, a.k.a. About the Bee, signing out. Mm -hmm.